hypothesis and theory. The best system humanity has created to identify truth is the scientific method. This grand method began with Aristotle, Greek philosopher and scientist, who first proposed the inductive-deductive method. Then Epicurus, Greek philosopher, who built on this idea and laid out his first rule of inquiry into physics. The scientific method was expanded by many others after this start, but it took on its modern persona after René Descartes, the French philosopher, mathematician and scientist, wrote his famous work, Discourse on Method. The scientific method has a long history. During its long gestation, it has been fired and tempered in the crucible of human thought and reason by many great minds. Here is a general description of this splendid method. To begin our journey towards a truth in science, a hypothesis is formed. Another way of understanding a hypothesis is to think of it as an idea of something that might lead to a truth. Next, experiments are designed and then conducted to disprove the hypothesis. In the experiment, observability, repeatability and measurement are sought. If these experiments cannot disprove the hypothesis, we move a step closer to a theory or a truth. In science, all theories and all hypotheses are always subject to change as new information is discovered. This is the power of the scientific method. For example, today, Albert Einstein's truth that light will bend due to gravitational effects is one of the most observed and established truths. However, when Einstein first came upon his truth, he had established only one of the three elements of the scientific method, measurement. He had mathematics that proved his idea, but at that time he lacked any observation, let alone repeated observations. Many years went by before anyone attempted to observe his predictions. After a failed first attempt, an observation was finally made that did indeed verify his forecast. In 1919, during a total solar eclipse of the Sun, Sir Arthur Eddington performed the first successful experimental test of Albert Einstein's truth that light will bend due to gravitational effects. Then after this initial observation, every other has verified that light does indeed bend due to gravitational effects. In the end, Einstein's great truth took on all three elements of a truth worthy of a high position on our truth scale, observability, repeatability, and measurement. This chain of evidence distills and refines truth. Another way of expressing this is that the bending of light due to gravitational effects is highly probable. This places Einstein's great truth high on our truth scale, near to the end of the scale where predictions are possible. An additional indicator of a substantial truth is that it can make accurate predictions about our universe. Albert Einstein formulated many other truths during his lifetime. These truths are so distilled and refined that they too have the ability to make accurate predictions. For example, Einstein's first theory of relativity predicted the possibility of black holes back in 1916. The term black hole was coined in 1967 by American astronomer John Wheeler and the first one was discovered in 1971. Another example of a highly distilled and refined truth is Charles Darwin's grand theory of evolution by natural selection. This truth also contains three elements of a substantial truth. Observation, repeatability and measurement. Just as with Einstein's truth, Darwin's truth has reached the level of accurate prediction of the universe. The discovery of the Darwin moth is one example of the predictive power of Darwin's truth. 
The great scientist postulated the existence of this unknown species of insect based purely on the size of an orchid from Madagascar and his understanding of the evolution and the ecology of orchids and insects. Darwin postulated that there must exist a highly adapted insect with just the right length proboscis that fertilizes this special orchid. It wasn't until 1992, nearly a century after Darwin's prediction, that observations were made of this elusive moth feeding on the flower and transferring pollen from plant to plant. This was observed in the wild and confirmed further with studies in captivity. Darwin's truth, like Einstein's truths, continued to make accurate predictions of the universe. This dimension of both truths assures them a high position on our truth scale. Other examples of the predictive power of Darwin's grand truth is based on the idea of common ancestry. Common ancestry is a major principle of Charles Darwin's grand theory of evolution by natural selection. It leads logically to powerful and testable predictions about evolution. For example, if we see that birds and reptiles group together based on their features and DNA sequences, we can predict that we should find common ancestors of birds and reptiles in the fossil record. Such predictions have been fulfilled moving the truth of evolution by natural selection even higher on the truth scale. If these predictions were not enough, one of the greatest fulfilled predictions of Darwin's great truth was the discovery in 2004 of a transitional form between fish and amphibians. This is the fossil species Tictaclic rosea, which tells us a lot about how vertebrates came to live on land. Until about 390 million years ago, the only vertebrates were fish. But 30 million years later, we find in the fossil record creatures that are clearly pteropods or four-footed vertebrates that walked on land. These early tetrapods were like modern amphibians in several ways. They had flat heads and bodies, a distinct neck and well-developed legs and limb girdles. Yet they also show strong links with earlier fishes, particularly the group known as lobe fin fishes, so called because of their large bony fins that enabled them to prop themselves up on the bottom of shallow lakes or streams. The fish-like structures of these early tetrapods include scales, limb bones and head bones. Tictaclic rosea's discovery in the fossil record is a stunning example of the predictive power of the theory of evolution. Where does Charles Darwin's great truth of evolution by natural selection finally fall on our truth scale? It is a highly probable truth. Any truth worthy of a high position on our truth scale must be based on a chain of evidence that is observable, repeatable and measurable. If any one of these elements is missing from the claimed truth, then it must be considered suspect and placed firmly at the foggy end of our truth scale.